Now let's move on to effects. We can add effects by inserting the effect directly on a track, or we can create an FX channel and use the auxiliary sense of a track to send to that FX channel. Let's add compression to the bass track to smooth it out. Click on the Select Insert Type 1 slot and choose Compressor from the Dynamic submenu. Make changes to the compression. Now let's show you how to create and use FX channels. Close the mixer and choose FX channel from the Add Track submenu of the project menu. Choose Stereo for configuration and select the Stereo Delay effect. We are going to put delay on the electric guitar track. Let's set the delay so that the left side and right side have different delay settings and make sure the mix is set to 100. Giving the stereo delay different left and right settings creates a more dynamic effect. With the delay set, click on the Edit Channel settings of the electric guitar track. Select FX1 Stereo Delay from the Select Send destination. Press the Active Send 1 button to turn on the send. This will allow you to send the guitar to the stereo delay. Pressing the S or solo button on the track will allow you to hear this more clearly. Move the slider to the right to raise the level of the send to the stereo delay effect. You will begin to hear the guitar being delayed. The great thing about effects channels is that the channel looks and feels just like a regular audio channel. You can EQ the effects channel, allowing you to EQ just the effect. In our case, changing the EQ on the FX1 stereo delay effects channel will only change the EQ of the delay. Now let's move on to automation. Automation allows us to make objects such as faders, pan, knobs, and effects move by themselves. This is very handy in that we can tell Cubase to make changes over a period of time, and those changes will be remembered and will occur again without our attention. We created a fade-in on the electric guitar track earlier. Let's remove the fade on this audio event and create some automation instead. Select the event and choose Remove Fades from the audio menu. Click the Show Hide Automation button at the far left of the track. You may need to hover your mouse over the far left bottom area until you see the button appear. In the window that appears below the audio event, use the Draw tool to draw in automation so that it resembles a fade-in. You can also use the Line tool to draw in automation in a straight line. Perfect for fade-in automation. Listen to the fade-in that we just created. You may have noticed that when we used the Draw tool to place an automation, the R button or Read Enable button became highlighted. This means that the automation on the track is being read back or played back. You can turn this off, and the automation will not be read back or not played. In our case, we drew in volume automation, so turning it off means it will not fade in, but stay at one level. There are so many examples to show when it comes to automation. We could have automated our effects or our send levels. The automation can be placed into write mode, and moving almost anything will create automation that we can edit for fine-tuning later on. Now that we have our project mixed, we will want to export it so that we can import it into another program, such as a CD burning application like WaveLab. Before we can export our mix, we need to tell Cubase how many bars to export. We can accomplish this by setting the locators. Set the left locator to bar 1, and the right locator to bar 65 on the transport panel. This will make sure we have all the music for export. Next select Audio Mix Down from the Export submenu of the File menu. The Export Audio Mixdown window opens. There are many features in this window that are covered in the Export Audio Mixdown chapter of the Operation Manual. Please refer to this for more complete information. File name is for naming the file for export. Let's name ours Mixing Mixdown. 
The path is where you wish to save the exported file on your computer. Use the Choose button to navigate to the folder you wish to save to. For convenience, there is the option to choose Use Project Audio Folder so that the exported file will end up in your project's audio folder. This is one of the best places to keep it so it won't accidentally become erased or lost. Normally, you want to save your exported file as a WAV file under File Format. This, of course, chiefly depends on what file format the other applications, such as a CD burning program, requires. You can choose whether you want the main stereo outputs, stereo out stereo, to be exported. This means the exported file will be generated through the main stereo outputs that we see in the mixer. You can also choose the individual outs of the audio channel for flexibility in your export. Let's choose stereo out stereo. Choose the sample rate and bit depth that will be required for your export. 44 1 kHz and 16 bit are common for CD burning. Select the bottom three left options, as these will import the audio back into Cubase after you export it and automatically create an audio track. The Export Audio Mixdown window will also close. Before we finish, there is one very important feature that we must select. This is Real-Time Export. Since we have an external MIDI instrument that is playing a physical keyboard and its audio is coming back into Cubase, we need the audio mixdown to happen in real time. This ensures that the MIDI data is properly sent to the external MIDI instrument and recorded back in. Don't forget this step. When you are done selecting all the right settings, choose Export at the bottom right. You will now see the exported stereo mix on a new stereo track. You can check to see if the audio mixdown sounds the way you want it by soloing the mixdown track.